our society is crumbling before our very eyes. Our, our civilization is going through a metamorphosis, a, a transformation uh, into something else. And where it goes from this point on is in our hands, where our lives go, where our salvation lies, our freedom. Individually, we have to be responsible for becoming better people in a world under control, under the control of a few people that would want us to be decadent, that would rather have us infight and hurt one another instead of realizing that we all live on this world together and no one should be a victim of genocide either in addition to poverty. Now, she's making a lot of good points. I want to add some more things to the BP story that have come out. They indicate that this could be even stranger than what most people uh, think right now. The mainstream media is covering portions of the story. They're, they're covering the basic fact that reporters are not allowed on many beaches. There's a lot of secrecy. And, uh, of course, uh, BP has it set up to where they're making money, as well as a Halliburton company, off of the cleanup from this operation. Here are some things that are essential that you know. The BP chief sold shares weekly before the oil spill. We have this documentation right here. He's not alone, though. Goldman Sachs also sold some of their shares, approximately 44%. Now, Bill, leave it up on uh, the document cam, on camera number one. Let's show them this as well. Goldman Sachs sold $250 million of BP stock before the spill. That is 44%. But wait, there is much, much more. Officials, sunken rig could cause huge oil spill. And in this particular report, there is some more information. An oil platform that burned for 36 hours after a massive explosion sank into the Gulf of Mexico on Thursday. And we're going back to April 22, 2010. So in this initial report, and they later retracted it, there was a admission that three hours before the rig went up, there was a explosion. This was reported by the Coast Guard, but they released a statement saying the error was due to a computer time stamp problem. We also have this piece of information, Gulf Spill Halliburton. Company worked on rig 20 hours before the explosion. Before the explosion took place, they were working on the rig, re-cementing it in the day prior to it. Now, what else took place involving Halliburton, which as we know is connected to the military industrial complex? Did anybody say Dick Cheney? Halliburton agrees to buy boots and coots. What is this? It's a company that uh, provides pressure control services for oil and gas wells in a stock and cash deal worth about $240 million. This came out on Friday, April 9th, 2010. That's when this report came out from Reuters about a week to two weeks before this disaster took place. Again, she's talking about the economy. Now, it's the economy and many other things that are causing some people to lose their composure and turn on one another. Economy worse for jobless. This is from the local paper here, the scanner. And many, many people are now going off their unemployment benefits. And we will see what the result of this will be. Not that we should be dependent upon the state, but there has to be jobs provided somewhere. But should it be the government or should the jobs come from the private sector? I believe the private sector. But all the money, all the money right now is in the hands of the big banks and the government. And they're dictating and controlling what jobs get created. And uh, there's going to be some other really strange jobs uh, being created in the future uh, to... Uh, Get more Americans working directly for the military industrial complex through via contractors. And then we have more information about uh, Obama's civilian defense plan. Uh, he has uh, recently uh, announced that uh, this is something that is going to move forward with to, of course, relief, uh, relief, provide relief to uh, military servicemen and contractors operating in the Middle East. And so this is very, very interesting and telling of where the country is going. Before I go any further, the point of this information, as most of you already know, is to liberate you from the bondage of the illusion of thinking that everything is just okay, that Obama or Bush and a president's going to save you. We weren't meant to live like this. Uh, with two, uh, two wolves uh, and a sheep voting on what's for dinner, and you're for dinner. Our livelihoods are for dinner. Your children's savings accounts, as well as your own, are all in jeopardy. And so this is happening as well as the economy melts down. Now, Bill, go to the next graphic that we have there in order on the slideshow. Scrap dollar as sole reserve currency is what the UN is calling for. This came out on July 1st, 10 days ago. In the next report, central banks start to abandon the US dollar. This is from CNN. A new report from Morgan Stanley confirms what many had suspected. The dollar is firmly on its way to losing its status as the reserve currency of the world. 
We already knew that central banks had preferred gold to dollars and that they're even selling their gold for cash. Now, according to Lawson's data, it seems that those very central banks prefer almost anything to dollars. Now let's take a flashback to the April 27th report in the Huffington Post. Banks bet against U.S. cities and states, and I brought this up on the show several times, so they're betting on failure. They're betting, they're hedging their bets that cities, states, towns, counties will collapse fiscally, economically. At that point, they will become even more dependent on the states, on the federal government, on the larger state for their own survival. The G20 is all about that, bringing in the world currency, the SDR system. And that's what many people are protesting about at the G20. Now, we've got videos of the G20. And again, at these major protests, World Bank protests, WTO protests, we constantly see more and more evidence of agent provocateurs starting fires, turning over cop cars, not being touched by the police, and many examples wearing brand new gear. And one case, in this particular case in Toronto, Canada, one of the protesters had a brand new bike helmet and it was wearing uh, Nike jogging shorts or, or jogging pants with brand new police issue appearing boots. I mean, boots that look just like the same boots that uh, their comrades are wearing. But do you see the anarchists get attacked? No, you see peaceful protesters and women literally snatched off the street. We'll get to that in just a few. So, Bill, let's go ahead and roll the first track, the next track. And uh, this is some of the footage that I've compiled, some of these clips here from the G20. And in Canada, the year prior at the SPP protest, there were some provocateurs that were caught wearing the exact same model issue boots as the police. So Canada has a little bit of experience pulling these shenanigans. So if you're one of those individuals that's living under the illusion that you can go to Canada and everything's gonna be fine, you got another thing coming. This is all about integrating Mexico, Canada, and the United States and creating the NAU, the North American Union. We have a lot of clips here but I can only bring clips that we have time to show. We'll play about another minute of this. All right, let's move on to the next track. This was one of the cop cars that the anarchists were attacking. As police look on across the street. And I know there are cops watching this show. I've met cops personally that do watch the show and this is what they need to understand. This show is not about blind hate towards the police. The police state is a much larger, it's the larger picture above your local police officer. It's the system that we live in that is seeking to control you more and more in stage events, whether it be terror attacks or anarchists uh, breaking windows so they have the pretext to crack down, create a police state and hit women over the head. Playing this went off the G20 and we have seen zero accountability since the revelations came out pertaining to their conduct. All of it documented all of it on camera, but of course they have the excuse, they're saying of course that uh, it's okay what they did because of what the anarchists did. And so this is the regular protest. This is again the other side where the anarchists weren't, were, weren't, weren't, you know, having their fun. The provocateurs. And again, it looks like America, but it's not in Canada. They're singing their own national anthem. This is not the United States, this is Canada. What has happened to us is now happening to other people, and so many Canadians 